Thank you, Lado, for this uh, introduction. I just would like to uh, thank uh, Manos and Manos for the beautiful invitation and for the very, very nice uh, meeting. Uh, I would like to speak about the limit of soft tissue procedure. Uh, all, already some uh, many speakers uh, speak about uh, soft tissue procedure and uh, bone loss procedure. My disclosure. Uh, some uh, very old uh, speaker about the uh, shoulder instability, but uh, we go back to the anatomy and to the definition of the stabilizer of the glenohumeral joint. There is a static bone stabilizer, articular conformity, glenoid version, coracoacromial arch static uh, soft tissue stabilizer, capsule ligamentous uh, structure, glenoid labrum, uh, rotator interval and negative intraarticular pressure and dynamic uh, stabilizer, concavity compression, rotator curve tear, long head of biceps and scapular rotator. So, uh, show, uh, describe very well the risk factor for the patient, for the surgeon, and uh, for the surgeon, there is uh, the most important thing is the misdiagnosis uh, of the instability and choice the worst procedure for the patient. The patient factor or limits is the young age the mal uh, gender and the contact sport on force, uh, forced overhead sport. The degree of uh, sport participation, uh, competitive or, or recreational. The worst uh, condition is the very young people, mal gender with uh, contact sport at uh, competitive uh, uh, degree of uh, sport participation. The risk of uh, failure of um, soft tissue repair is the max. Anatomical limit is very important to know, but uh, uh, some speaker had uh, speak about that uh, just before. The articular conformity is very important. The uh, glenoid version is less, and coracoacromial arch too. Uh, the Articular conformity is very important. It was very uh, beautiful uh, described by uh, Eji Itoi with uh, articular curvature and uh, the deepness of uh, glenoid side. It's very important to check it. But uh, Palmer in 1948 speaked already about the uh, conform articular conformity regarding the humeral bone defect. The glenoid version, it's important, but definitely less. And uh, if you have a big uh, anteversion or big retroversion, you increase the risk of failure of uh, uh, soft tissue uh, procedure. The glenoid rim fracture is uh, very, very important. You have seen this morning. And uh, the first to uh, develop a classification was uh, Bigliani with the Bigliani glenoid rim lesion classification in three stages. It's very important to check uh, the glenoid side because there is not only a bone fracture, there is uh, some glenoid erosion, bony bancart, and a full uh, glenoid fracture. The glenoid erosion is very important to check about the uh, West Point view or Benagio view for the French people with uh, an acute angle normally and with a big angle, you have erosion of the anterior part of the glenoid rim. The glenoid fracture must be evaluated in quantity and uh, the, the two first procedure to evaluate the bone defect was uh, by Steve Burkhardt uh, with the uh, ratio between the uh, first uh, radius and the second radius uh, and uh, after uh, 
20%, there is a 55% of uh, uh, defect and is uh, limit to uh, repair the bone uh, uh, without a soft tissue procedure. And Christian Gerber described a very similar um, technique with the ratio between the uh, radius of the uh, the full radius of the glenoid uh, uh, inferior part and the length of the uh, def uh, bone defect. Paul Emil Wishman and Willems describe a, tec a technique to evaluate the bone loss and the 3D reconstruction. But uh, the other uh, bone defect is the uh, humeral bone defect. It's very important to check it. Uh, and the first the, um, definition of the uh, deepness of the Ilsax lesion was described by Philippe Hardy with uh, uh, internal rotation view. And uh, he can uh, have the good assessment of the deepness of the Ilsax lesion. Uh, Itoy described another technique uh, on the CT scan, but the most important point is the uh, uh, definition of the uh, ILSAX lesion engaging described by uh, Steve Burkhardt and Joe Debeer. Because you see here on this, and this way is not engaging, and this one is engaged. And there is a difference between the two uh, situations, and the treatment could be different for uh, each of them. You see uh, the reconstruction view from Itoy. You see the glenoid uh, um, area in green over the humeral head in different uh, flexion, 45, 90, on 135 uh, degrees. The glenoid track on Ilsax lesion is very important because you see on the inferior part, like this, you have a risk of engage engagement here or not here. It's very important to check it. More the Ilsax lesion is medial and more the engaging risk is rise. The combination of bone, uh, glenoid bone defect and ILSAX lesion increase the risk of engaging lesion. And you see the uh, beautiful view uh, from uh, Di Giacomo uh, explain very well the combination of the two uh, defect uh, increase the risk of engaging lesion. Sa, uh, the Indian uh, surgeon, described in first one uh, soft tissue uh, technique for bone def anterior bone defect, and he described uh, latissimus dorsi uh, transfer posteriorly to increase the external uh, forces and to pull the humeral uh, head back and to stabilize the shoulder as well with the uh, bone defect on anterior uh, um, capsular insufficiency. The first description of the remplissage by, uh, was by Connolly. Uh, it's an uh, open procedure for failure of Mancart procedure. It's uh, just posterior uh, procedure because it don't uh, touch at the anterior part of the labrum. It just makes a uh, uh, capsulotenodesis and myotenodesis uh, into the heel sac lesion by open procedure and in improve uh, the uh, result of the failure of the bank art with the big heel sac lesion. The first uh, technique arthroscopic uh, was described by uh, Jean Wolf, and he combined, in this case, the bancard repair with the remplissage technique. But uh, that is the limit of uh, the bone limit of the uh, soft tissue procedure. If you have a big uh, bone defect, 
uh, the risk is to uh, to have a failure of the soft tissue procedure if you don't respect the bone uh, reconstruction as well, uh, especially for the uh, glenoid defect. If the glenoid defect is between uh, 15 to 25 uh, on more of um, a def a bone defect, you need to restore a bone uh, aspect of the glenoid site to have the uh, stability, uh, the better stability as well. But there is uh, also static soft tissue, capsulo ligamentous uh, structure, glenoid labrum, rotator interval on negative pressure. Uh, it's very important to check the inferior part of the capsule, and the gage sign is the best way to have a, a, a good uh, assessment of the inferior capsule, and uh, you can separate the multidirectional uh, instability and hyperlaxity of the regular instability. But there is a possible uh, extension of the lesion along of the bone ligament bone chain. It was described by the French Arthroscopic Society meeting in 2000 by Pascal Boileau and Laura Lafosse. You have uh, four situations. One situation is a bancart lesion, is an isolated bancart les lesion. You have different uh, options with uh, a regular bancart, bony bancart. Uh, just avulsion of the uh, labrum and uh, the capsule, and uh, alpsa lesion or a glad lesion. The bancart lesion could be uh, uh, associated with uh, uh, ligamentous and uh, capsular distension, uh, stretching, and it's very important to check it because uh, you need to uh, reduce the laxity of the tendon, uh, of the ligament of the capsule to have the best result as possible. You have a bone cart lesion with a, a stretching of the ligament and agar lesion is a very bad uh, situation because it's difficult to uh, can repair the a capsule as well, and the soft tissue procedure doesn't work any anymore in this time. Agar lesion must be uh, no very well because it's a uh, uh, big risk of failure because you reattach the labrum as well on the capsule on the glenoid side, but it doesn't be attached into the humeral side, and you have a failure automatically because is not a good fixation and do good restoring of stability of the uh, shoulder. You can see one aspect of the uh, agar lesion with a muscle, a subscapularis muscle, you can see uh, over the uh, capsule and the detachment is very, very big. You have uh, no chance to, to f uh, have a good result in this condition. Yes. You see the second uh, video with the same aspect. Uh, you, you see the muscle as well. And in this condition, we understand very well, it's not possible to imagine a soft tissue procedure to uh, stabilize this shoulder. Another type of uh, agile lesion. In this condition, to evaluate the limit of the a soft tissue procedure, the EC score is very interesting because uh, you can select the uh, patient factors of patient limit with the age, the degree of sports participation, the type of sport, uh, sh uh, the shoulder hyperlaxity. It's uh, a soft tissue, static soft tissue uh, factors. But you can have this uh, algorithm uh, regarding the engaging uh, lesion, and certainly you can uh, go to the Latarge procedure if you have a damaged capsule. If you have an intact capsule, it's possible to manage the bone defect as well. Anatomical limits is very important. It's a dynamic soft tissue, the concavity compression by the different muscle, the rotator cuff and the long head of biceps. Rotator cuff is very important. A Magnuson 
described in first the insufficiency of the subscapularis in the uh, shoulder stability. And if you have, uh, we have speak uh, this morning about the rotator cuff tear. If you have tear of the subscapularis, you can have uh, uh, shoulder instability and it's necessary to repair the subscapularis as well to have the best stability as possible. The surgeon factor of limit is very important to know also because it's a misdiagnosis, misunderstanding of, of multidirectional or posterior instability. Even uh, if you have a, or, uh, the Kim lesion on the posterior way, and certainly it's possible to uh, repair all of the parts and the uh, inferior uh, glenohumeral ligament, anterior and posterior, the post, uh, inferior hamac is very important to reduce the inferior hamac as well. The failure to address the capsular laxity is very important and very difficult to check the laxity of the capsule. The failure to address the humeral head defect we have seen on the glenoid defect too. And the most important thing is the non-anatomical labral repair, labral not sufficiently elevated, resulting in medial positioning Labrum repair not extend inferior to mid glenoid notch. And uh, uh, we can add the good selection of the procedure, and you cannot miss the procedure you, you use for stabilize the shoulder. Thank you so much for your attention.